before we get started, please help us grow to 63,000 subscribers and also give us a like as well. Thank you and enjoy. As I sat alone in my dimly lit room, the only source of light coming from the flickering candle on my nightstand, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. It was a chilly autumn night, and the wind outside howled like a pack of wolves in the distance. The shadows danced on the walls, casting eerie shapes that seemed to whisper secrets from another realm. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild, but deep down, I knew better. I had always been a skeptic, scoffing at tales of ghosts and demons, dismissing them as mere superstitions. But tonight, as I sat in that room, I couldn't deny the unisi that had settled in the pit of my stomach. It had all started a week ago when I moved into this old, creaky house. The neighbours had warned me about its dark history, but I had brushed off their warnings with a nervous chuckle. The clock on the wall ticked away the seconds, each one echoing through the silence of the room. And then I heard it, a faint, almost imperceptible whisper. I strained my ears, trying to make out the words. It sounded like a name, whispered over and over again, Emily, Emily. My heart raced as I realized that there was no one else in the house, and I certainly hadn't invited anyone over. I grabbed the candle and cautiously made my way through the dark corridor, following the haunting voice. It led me to the attic door, which was slightly ajar. With trembling hands, I pushed it open and climbed the narrow, creaking stairs. The attic was a maze of dusty old boxes and forgotten relics. And there, in the corner, stood a weathered antique mirror. The voice grew louder, more urgent. Emily! Emily! I couldn't resist its pull. I approached the mirror and stared into its depths, my own reflection distorted by the age and wear of the glass. Suddenly the room around me disappeared, and I was plunged into darkness. I was no longer in the attic, but in a different place altogether. It was a desolate, abandoned mansion, covered in cobwebs and decay. The air was frigid, and I could see my breath as I exhaled in terror. And there, standing before me, was a spectral figure, a young woman with raven-black hair and pale, lifeless eyes. She whispered my name once more. Emily. I tried to run, but my feet were rooted to the spot. The ghostly apparition reached out a bony hand and touched my forehead, sending a shock of icy cold through my entire body. I screamed, but no sound escaped my lips. The world around me twisted and contorted, and I felt myself being pulled deeper into the abyss. When I awoke, I was back in my dimly lit room, the candle on the nightstand still flickering. It had all been a nightmare, a terrible, vivid dream. But as I gazed into the mirror on the wall, I saw her reflection, the ghostly figure from my dream standing right behind me. She whispered my name one last time, her voice filled with longing and despair. And then, with a bone-chilling scream, I was pulled into the mirror, joining her in the world of the forgotten, forever trapped in the darkness. Story 2. Title. Cabin of Nightmares. The wind howled outside, sending shivers down my spine as I huddled beneath the warm cocoon of my blankets. It was a cold, dark night, and I was alone in my small cabin nestled deep in the woods. The only source of light came from the flickering flames in the fireplace, casting eerie shadows on the wooden walls. I had always loved the solitude of this remote cabin, but tonight was different. There was an unsettling feeling in the air, as if I was being watched. I tried to shake off the unease and focus on the book in my hands, but every creak and groan of the old cabin seemed amplified in the silence. As I turned the pages, a sudden thud echoed from the direction of the front door. My heart skipped a beat, and I strained my ears to listen. Another thud, louder this time, followed by a low, guttural growl. My blood ran cold, and I knew I couldn't ignore it any longer. Slowly, I placed the book on the table and grabbed the flashlight from the nearby shelf. With trembling hands, I made my way towards the front door, each step echoing loudly in the stillness of the night. The growling continued, now accompanied by heavy breathing. I reached for the doorknob, my heart pounding in my chest. With a deep breath, I flung the door open and the beam of my flashlight illuminated a pair of glowing, malevolent eyes staring back at me. It was a creature like none I had ever seen before, a grotesque, hulking figure with matted fur and sharp, glistening fangs. I stumbled backward, slamming the door shut, but the creature was relentless. 
It began to scratch and claw at the door, the sound sending chills down my spine. Panic surged through me, and I knew I had to find a way to escape this nightmare. I rushed to the window, hoping to climb out, but the woods outside were pitch black, and the forest seemed to stretch on forever. There was no way I could make it to safety on foot. The creature's relentless assault on the door grew more frenzied, and I knew I was running out of time. Desperation took hold, and I looked around the cabin for anything that could help me defend myself. My eyes landed on the fireplace, and I grabbed the poker, the metal cool and reassuring in my hand. With newfound resolve, I approached the door once more. As I swung the door open, the creature lunged at me, teeth bared, eyes filled with malice. I swung the poker with all my strength, connecting with a sickening thud. The creature let out an agonized screech and stumbled backward, disappearing into the night. Gasping for breath, I slammed the door shut once more, my heart still racing. I had survived, but I knew that whatever that creature was, it would be back. With trembling hands, I locked all the doors and windows, vowing to stay vigilant through the long, terrifying night. The cabin that had once been my sanctuary had become a prison, and I could only hope that the dawn would bring safety and answers to the horrors that lurked in the darkness of the woods. Story 3. Title. First Person View. In the small town of Oak Ridge, nestled deep within the heart of a dense ancient forest, there was a legend whispered in hushed tones around campfires and in the flickering light of cosy cabins. It was the tale of the haunted forest where lost souls were said to wander, trapped in a never-ending nightmare. I, a curious journalist seeking a sensational story, decided to investigate. Equipped with a backpack full of supplies and a flashlight, I ventured into the woods one moonless night. My heart pounded as the trees closed in around me, their branches twisted like bony fingers reaching out to grab at my sanity. I couldn't shake the feeling that unseen eyes were watching my every move. As I delved deeper into the forest, the temperature dropped, and an eerie mist swirled around my ankles. My flashlight's feeble beam revealed gnarled roots that seemed to writhe and twist, making each step treacherous. I couldn't shake the sensation that something was following me, just beyond the edge of my vision. Then, I heard it. A soft, mournful wail that seemed to emanate from all directions at once. My heart raced as I quickened my pace, my flashlight flickering in the oppressive darkness. Shadows danced, and strange shapes loomed at the edge of my vision, disappearing when I turned to face them. I stumbled upon a clearing, and there, under the ghostly glow of the moon, I saw them. Pale, ethereal figures moved among the trees, their eyes hollow and empty. They reached out to me, their ghostly hands passing through my skin like a cold wind. I fled in terror, crashing through the underbrush, branches clawing at my skin. I could feel their presence closing in around me, whispering incoherent words in a language long forgotten. I finally burst from the forest, gasping for breath and covered in scratches. I had survived the haunted forest, but the memories of those lost souls would haunt my dreams forever. The legend was real, and I had witnessed it firsthand a first-person view of a nightmare that would forever haunt my soul. Story 4. Title, The Haunting Melody. On a moonless night in the small, secluded village of Ravenwood, a chilling tale was whispered from one generation to the next. A tale of the haunted violin. Its origins were shrouded in mystery, but the cursed instrument was said to be crafted from the wood of a sinister tree that thrived on darkness and despair. One fateful evening, as the wind whispered through the twisted trees surrounding the village, a musician named Lucian discovered the violin hidden deep within the attic of his dilapidated, ancestral home. The moment his fingers touched its cold, ebony strings, an unsettling presence filled the room. Lucian, a virtuoso violinist, could not resist the allure of the haunting instrument. He played a melancholic melody that seemed to resonate with the very essence of his soul. The haunting notes echoed through the empty house, drawing the villagers to his doorstep. As the eerie music flowed, the villagers began to dance involuntarily, their faces etched with terror. Their bodies moved with a grotesque grace, as if possessed by an otherworldly force. Lucian, oblivious to the horrifying spectacle he had unleashed, continued to play, his eyes locked on the cursed violin. As the night wore on, the village's once jovial atmosphere turned into a nightmarish carnival, 
of macabre dance and haunting music. The villagers begged Lucian to stop, but he was entranced, unable to break free from the violin's malevolent grip. As dawn broke, the last villagers collapsed from exhaustion, their bodies broken and their minds shattered. Lucian finally ceased playing, gasping for breath. He gazed upon the devastation he had unwittingly caused. The cursed violin now lay silent, but the village of Ravenwood would never be the same. The haunting melody had exacted a terrible price, leaving a legacy of suffering and despair. And in the stillness of that morning, the malevolent spirit of the violin awaited its next victim, its haunting melody echoing through the cursed woods. Story 5 title, The Mirror's Curse. In a remote forgotten mansion nestled deep within a dense ancient forest, a chilling secret resided, the cursed mirror. The grand estate had been abandoned for decades, its halls echoing with the ghosts of the past. One stormy night, Sarah, a young woman with an insatiable curiosity, stumbled upon the mansion. She sought shelter from the tempestuous downpour, and the abandoned manor seemed like her only refuge. With each step she took inside, the air grew heavier, and shadows seemed to slither around her. In a forgotten corner of the mansion, Sarah found a room adorned with a massive, ornate mirror that seemed to beckon her closer. As she gazed into it, her reflection started to warp and twist, revealing a sinister, malevolent version of herself. The doppelganger in the mirror beckoned to Sarah, a sinister grin spreading across its face. Unable to resist, she touched the glass, and a searing pain coursed through her hand. When she pulled it back, the reflection laughed, mocking her. Terrified, Sarah tried to turn away, but the mirror held her gaze captive. It showed her visions of a horrifying future, each more grotesque than the last. She saw herself trapped in a never-ending nightmare, tormented by dark forces beyond comprehension. Desperate to escape the mirror's clutches, Sarah summoned all her willpower and staggered out of the room. The mansion seemed to fight her every step, as if trying to keep her within its cursed walls. But she reached the front door and fled into the stormy night. As she escaped the mansion, she heard sinister laughter echoing from within. Sarah knew that the cursed mirror still hungered for souls, and she had narrowly avoided becoming its next victim. She would forever carry the scars of that night, a chilling reminder of the malevolent forces that lurked in the darkness. Story 6. Title, The Whispering Woods. Deep in the heart of Blackwood Forest, an eerie legend lurked. Locals spoke of the Whispering Woods, a place where the trees held secrets and the wind whispered ancient incantations. It was said that those who ventured too deep into the woods never returned the same. One gloomy autumn afternoon, Alex, an adventurous soul, decided to test the legend. Armed with a tattered map and a lantern, he plunged into the heart of Blackwood Forest, determined to uncover the truth behind the Whispering Woods. As he delved deeper, the atmosphere grew heavy, and the trees seemed to close in on him. The lantern's feeble light struggled to pierce the thick canopy. Alex heard faint, indistinct whispers that seemed to come from the very trees themselves. Ignoring the mounting unease, he pressed on until he stumbled upon a clearing unlike any other. In its center stood a gnarled tree, its bark etched with eerie symbols. Drawn by an irresistible force, Alex approached the tree and touched its ancient surface. Suddenly, the forest came alive. The trees around him began to sway, their branches twisting into grotesque shapes. The whispers grew louder, their words unintelligible yet filled with dread. Shadows danced on the periphery of his vision and a bone-chilling cold seeped into his bones. Panicking, Alex tried to retreat, but the forest seemed to have other plans. The trees closed ranks blocking his escape, the whispers turned into anguished cries that echoed in his mind, driving him to the brink of madness. Just when hope seemed lost, Alex remembered an old rhyme he had heard about the whispering woods. He repeated it aloud with trembling voice, and as the last word left his lips, the forest released its grip. The trees recoiled, and the whispers subsided. Gasping for breath, Alex stumbled out of the woods, his heart heavy with the knowledge that he had glimpsed the true terror of the whispering woods. He vowed never to return, leaving the cursed forest and its malevolent secrets far behind. A title, The Haunting of Victoria Hall. My name is Olivia, and I'd always been drawn to the enigmatic. So when I inherited Victoria Hall, 
a dilapidated mansion in the countryside, I saw it as an opportunity for adventure. But what I didn't realise was that the house held a sinister secret, one that would haunt me forever. Victoria Hall stood alone at the edge of a dense, foreboding forest. Its towering, ivy-covered walls concealed tales of long-forgotten tragedies. The moment I crossed its threshold, a chill ran down my spine, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The grand foyer was filled with dusty, decaying relics of the past. A grand chandelier, covered in cobwebs, hung ominously overhead. A portrait of a sombre-looking family loomed on the wall, their eyes following my every move. It was said that they were the original owners of Victoria Hall, and their tragic demise had cursed the place. As night fell, I retired to my room, determined to uncover the mysteries that plagued this mansion. But as I lay in bed, strange sounds echoed through the corridors. Whispers, like ghostly murmurs, filled the air. I rose from my bed, clutching a flickering candle and ventured into the dark hallways. The whispers grew louder, and I followed their haunting melody to the library. The room was bathed in an eerie blue light, emanating from an ancient book resting on an ornate pedestal. I opened it, revealing a collection of sinister incantations and chilling tales of the supernatural. As I read aloud from the book, the room shook violently, shadows danced on the walls, and an icy gust of wind engulfed me. I tried to close the book, but it was as if an unseen force held it open. Desperation welled within me as I realised I had unleashed something malevolent. Suddenly, the apparitions of the family from the portrait materialised before me. Their hollow eyes bore into my soul, and their ghostly hands reached out, fingers like ice. They were trapped in Victoria Hall, and my actions had awakened their restless spirits. Terrified, I fled the library and ran through the mansion, their ghostly wails echoing in pursuit. I reached the front door, but it was bolted shut, trapping me inside with the vengeful spirits. In a desperate bid to escape, I retraced my steps to the library, hoping to find a way to appease the spirits. The book remained open, its pages filled with incantations to banish the malevolent entities. I recited the words, my voice trembling. With a deafening roar, the spirits were engulfed in a blinding light. They screamed in agony as they were banished, their forms dissipating like smoke. The mansion trembled, and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. As the first rays of dawn broke, I found myself standing alone in the library, the cursed book closed and lifeless. The haunting of Victoria Hall had finally come to an end, but the memories of that night would forever haunt my dreams. I had survived, but I knew I could never truly escape the malevolent legacy of the house I had inherited. Title, The Echoes of Eliza and Thomas. My name is Eliza and my husband's name is Thomas. We were never the superstitious type, always scoffing at ghost stories and tales of the supernatural. That all changed when we moved into the old Victorian mansion at the edge of town, a place locals referred to as the Whispering Estate. From the moment we stepped inside, an ominous atmosphere hung in the air. It was as if the very walls of the house held secrets too dreadful to share. Despite our initial unease, the house's grandeur and affordable price lured us in. Our first night in the Whispering Estate was sleepless. Strange sounds echoed through the hallways, faint whispers, the creaking of unseen footsteps, and the mournful echoes that gave the house its name. Thomas dismissed it as the wind or the settling of an old house, but I couldn't shake the feeling that we were not alone. The next evening, while Thomas was out at work, I decided to explore the attic. It was a dim, dusty space filled with ancient trunks and forgotten relics, as I opened an old chest, my eyes fell upon a tattered journal. It belonged to Beatrice, a former resident of the house, and it contained accounts of bizarre occurrences, mentioning a malevolent spirit known as the Whisperer. Shivers ran down my spine as I read her words describing a faceless figure that haunted the house, its whispers growing louder each night. Beatrice's final entry spoke of her desperate attempt to banish the entity, but it was clear that she had failed. That night, I shared Beatrice's journal with Thomas. He was sceptical but agreed to humour me by conducting a seance in the hopes of communicating with whatever dwelled in the Whispering Estate. We gathered candles, a makeshift Ouija board, and sat in the dimly lit living room. As we began the seance, the room grew icy cold. The candles flickered erratically, 
and the planchette on the Ouija board moved of its own accord, spelling out the words, I am here. Panic gripped us both, and Thomas attempted to close the session, but the entity refused to let go. The lights in the room flickered violently, and a guttural voice filled the air, whispering in agony. I felt an invisible force pressing down on me, suffocating and malevolent. It was as if the Whisperer resented our intrusion and sought to exact its revenge. Desperation overwhelmed us. We recited prayers, hoping for divine intervention. Suddenly the room fell silent. The oppressive presence lifted and the candles returned to their normal glow. We were left trembling, knowing we had narrowly escaped a sinister fate. In the following days, we researched ways to banish the Whisperer and came across an ancient ritual involving salt and sage. With no other options, we decided to perform the ritual to cleanse the house of its malevolent spirit. As we sprinkled salt and burned sage, the house seemed to resist, with shadows writhing and walls oozing a dark, viscous substance. The air grew thick, and we heard the agonizing whispers once more, but we persisted, chanting incantations and demanding the spirit's departure. Gradually, the oppressive atmosphere lifted, and the house fell silent. We knew that the whisperer had been banished, and the Whispering Estate was finally free from its malevolent grip. Now, as we sit in the peaceful silence of our home, we can't help but wonder if the Whisperer has truly gone, or if it's merely biding its time, waiting for another opportunity to torment those who dare to enter its domain. We had underestimated the power of the supernatural, and the memory of our encounter with the Whisperer would forever haunt us, a chilling reminder that some mysteries should remain unsolved. Title, The Phantom Carnival. My name is Alice and my brother's name is Michael. We grew up in a quiet, sleepy town nestled between rolling hills and dense forests. Our childhood was idyllic until that fateful summer when a mysterious carnival arrived, forever altering the course of our lives. The carnival, known as the Phantom Carnival, materialized overnight on the outskirts of town. Its arrival was shrouded in secrecy as if it had emerged from the depths of a shadowy realm. With its faded, tattered tents and eerie music that seemed to play on a perpetual loop, it struck an ominous chord in our hearts. One evening, curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to sneak out to explore the Phantom Carnival. We ventured through the dense woods that separated our home from the enigmatic attraction. The moon cast an eerie glow on the carnival grounds, revealing empty rides and deserted game stalls. As we wandered deeper into the carnival, we discovered a tent unlike the others. Its entrance was adorned with strange symbols and flickering lanterns. A sign overhead proclaimed it as Madame Zara's Tent of Fortune. The temptation was too strong, and we entered, guided only by the dim, crimson light within. Inside, the tent was shrouded in a thick, incense-laden fog. A hushed voice beckoned us forward and we found ourselves face to face with Madame Zara, a woman draped in flowing garments and adorned with countless rings and amulets. Her eyes, however, were the most striking, piercing, and ancient. Madame Zara gazed into a crystal ball, her voice like a whispering wind as she spoke of our destinies. She revealed secrets we had never shared with anyone and it sent shivers down our spines. The atmosphere grew heavier and Michael's unease was palpable. We were about to leave when Madame Zara's tone changed. She warned of an impending darkness, a malevolent force that would envelop our lives. She urged us to flee, the Phantom Carnival, before it was too late. We dismissed her words as mere theatrics and left, shaken but not convinced. The following days were marked by bizarre occurrences. Our dreams were filled with twisted visions and we heard eerie laughter in the dead of night. The townsfolk spoke of similar experiences and unease spread like wildfire. Desperate for answers, we returned to the Phantom Carnival, determined to confront Madame Zara once more. But this time, the carnival was different. It had come alive, as if awakened by our return. The rides moved with an otherworldly energy, and the games beckoned with an unnatural allure. We entered Madame Zara's tent once more, but she was nowhere to be found. Instead, a grotesque puppet dressed in her likeness, stood in her place. Its hollow eyes stared into our souls and it cackled in a chilling mechanical voice. As we tried to leave, the entrance vanished, 
leaving us trapped within the cursed tent. The puppet revealed its true form, a nightmarish, marionette-like creature with elongated limbs and gnarled fingers. It spoke of a curse that bound us to the Phantom Carnival, a curse that fed on our fear and despair. Days turned into weeks as we were subjected to a twisted, eternal carnival. The rides became instruments of torment and the games were rigged to ensure our failure. Each night, the sinister laughter echoed through the tents, a reminder of our helplessness. But we refused to surrender to despair. With a glimmer of hope, we remembered Madame Zara's warning and searched for a way to break the curse. We discovered an ancient spell hidden in one of the tents, a spell that could sever the carnival's hold on us. On a moonless night, we gathered our strength and chanted the incantation. The air grew thick with malevolence, and the puppet's laughter reached a deafening crescendo. But we held firm, refusing to succumb to fear. With a blinding burst of light, the curse shattered, and the phantom carnival crumbled into dust. We found ourselves back in our hometown, the carnival's ominous presence banished. Years have passed since that night, but the memory of the phantom carnival still haunts us. It serves as a chilling reminder that some mysteries are best left unexplored, and that darkness can lurk in the most unexpected of places. We may have escaped the carnival's clutches, but the scars it left behind are a permanent reminder of the malevolent force that dwells in the shadows. Title, The Enigma House. My name is Mark, and my life took a sinister turn the day I inherited Mark House, a sprawling estate on the edge of a mist-shrouded forest. The mansion stood as a relic of a bygone era, its ominous silhouette dominating the landscape, a testament to secrets long buried. The locals had always whispered tales of Mark House claiming it was cursed, but I, a rational man, brushed off their superstitions, eager to make the mansion my home. Little did I know that darkness dwelled within its walls, a malevolent force that would soon reveal itself. The first night in Mark House was restless. Unsettling sounds echoed through its echoing hallways, muffled footsteps, distant whispers, and an eerie, discordant melody that seemed to play on an otherworldly instrument. I chalked it up to the unfamiliarity of my new surroundings, yet I couldn't escape the sensation of being watched. As days turned to weeks, the mansion's enigmatic nature unraveled. Shadows danced in corners bereft of light, and the air grew thick with an ominous presence. Certain rooms seemed to change overnight, their architecture shifting as if in defiance of the laws of physics. One evening, while I was exploring the attic, I stumbled upon a journal. It belonged to the mansion's former owner, a woman named Ilara. Her entries were filled with a growing sense of dread, describing bizarre occurrences and visions that haunted her. Ilara's journal told a chilling tale of her time in Mark House. She spoke of spectral apparitions that visited her in the night, their faces twisted in anguish. She described a malevolent entity known as the Enigma, a name whispered only in hushed tones. I shared Ilara's journal with a close friend, Emily, and we decided to delve deeper into the mysteries of Mark House. We lit candles and gathered around a makeshift Ouija board in the dimly lit living room, determined to communicate with whatever dwelled within. As we initiated the seance, a chill descended upon the room, and the candles flickered erratically. The planchette on the Ouija board moved with a will of its own, spelling out the words, We are here. The oppressive atmosphere grew thicker, and Emily's unease was palpable. A guttural voice filled the air, speaking in a language neither of us understood. I felt an unseen presence pressing down on me, as if the very walls of the house were closing in. It was as if the enigma resented our intrusion and sought to exact its revenge. Desperation overcame us. We recited prayers and demanded the spirits depart, but they clung to us, their presence growing more oppressive with each passing moment. Emily reached for a vial of holy water, flinging it into the air. The room exploded in a blinding light and the spirits wailed in agony. When the light dissipated, we were left trembling, knowing that we had narrowly escaped a sinister fate. The malevolent spirits had retreated and the oppressive atmosphere had lifted. Determined to cleanse Mark House of its darkness, Emily and I performed an ancient ritual involving salt and sage. The mansion resisted, shadows writhing and walls oozing a dark, vicious substance. But we persisted, chanting incantations and demanding the malevolent entities depart. With a deafening roar, the spirits were engulfed in a blinding light once more. 
Their anguished cries filled the air as they were banished, their forms dissipating like smoke. The mansion trembled and the oppressive atmosphere finally lifted. Now as I sit in the peaceful silence of my home, I can't help but wonder if the enigma has truly departed or if it's merely biding its time, waiting for another opportunity to torment those who dare to enter Mark House. I had underestimated the power of the supernatural, and the memory of my encounter with the Enigma would forever haunt me, a chilling reminder that some mysteries should remain unsolved, and that darkness can lurk even in a house bearing one's own name. Title: The Haunting of Lucius Hollow My name is Lucius, and the shadows of my past have haunted me relentlessly since I inherited Hollow House a foreboding manor perched atop a desolate hill. The mansion had always been a subject of sinister rumors in our town, whispered tales of spectral apparitions and chilling cries that echoed in the night. The day I took possession of the estate, a heavy mist blanketed the land, shrouding the mansion in an eerie stillness. My friends and family warned me of the ominous reputation of Hollow House, but I was determined to uncover its secrets, believing in reason over superstition. The first night in Hollow House was far from peaceful. Mysterious sounds reverberated through the echoing hallways, uncanny whispers, elusive footsteps, and an unsettling melodic lament that sent tremors through my soul. I reasoned that it was merely the house's aging timbers settling, yet I couldn't escape the unshakable feeling of being watched. As weeks passed, the house began to reveal its enigmatic nature. Shadows danced in the corners, regardless of the source of light. The air grew heavy with a pervasive presence, and rooms transformed overnight, their architecture shifting in defiance of reality itself. One evening, driven by my insatiable curiosity, I ventured into the attic, where I uncovered a journal. It belonged to a former occupant, a woman named Serafina. Her entries were filled with escalating fear, chronicling a series of inexplicable events that plagued her time at Hollow House. Serafina's journal told a chilling tale of her time in the mansion. She spoke of spectral visitations in the dead of night, their faces twisted in torment. She described a malevolent entity known as The Hollow, a name spoken only in hushed whispers. I shared Serafina's journal with my close confidant Amelia, and we resolved to delve deeper into the mysteries of Hollow House. Armed with candles and a makeshift Ouija board, we gathered in the dimly lit living room, determined to establish contact with whatever dwelled within. As we initiated the seance, an unnatural coldness descended upon the room. The candles flickered wildly, and the planchette on the Ouija board moved of its own volition, spelling out the words, We are here. The oppressive atmosphere thickened and Amelia's unease was palpable. A guttural voice pierced the air, speaking in an ancient tongue unknown to us. An unseen force pressed down on us, as if the very walls of the house were closing in. It was as if the hollow resented our intrusion and sought to exact its revenge. Desperation consumed us. We recited prayers and demanded the spirits depart, but they clung to us, their presence growing more suffocating by the second. Amelia grabbed a vial of holy water and hurled it into the air. The room erupted in a blinding light, and the spirits wailed in agony. When the light finally subsided, we were left trembling, knowing we had narrowly escaped a sinister fate. The malevolent spirits had retreated and the oppressive atmosphere had lifted. Determined to cleanse Hollow House of its darkness, Amelia and I performed an ancient ritual involving salt and sage. The mansion resisted, its shadows writhing and its walls oozing a dark, viscous substance. Yet we pressed on, chanting incantations and demanding the malevolent entities depart. With a thunderous roar, the spirits were engulfed in a blinding light once more. Their anguished cries filled the air as they were banished, their forms dissipating like smoke. The mansion quaked, and the oppressive atmosphere finally relented. Now, as I sit in the tranquility of my home, I cannot help but wonder if the hollow has truly been vanquished or if it waits in the shadows, anticipating another chance to torment those who dare tread the halls of Hollow House. I had underestimated the power of the supernatural, and the memory of my encounter with the Hollow will forever haunt me, a chilling reminder that some mysteries are best left unexplored and that darkness can lurk even in the heart of a house bearing one's own name.